going to live for the next however many weeks I'm pregnant, you know, up, up to five weeks, not knowing if I'm going to have a baby with a heart defect. Good morning, loves. I am on my way to my high risk appointment. I'm sorry, my phone is not situated right. I took the day off of work. Adam worked from home this morning. He's in the car in front of me. It's been kind of a crazy morning. I think we've both just kind of been distracting ourselves. I didn't think I was nervous until I just had to pee three times in a matter of two minutes. Not kidding you. Full every time. Weird. It's my nerves. But I did pack my hospital bag last night just in case. I was planning on making a video about it, but we'll go through it together later as long as I don't need it today. I was just not in the mood last night after everything going on with the baby's heartbeat and everything. And I'm sure he's fine, but until you have confirmation from all the tests, of course, it's nerve wracking. Oh, thank God I feel I'm crawling around in my stomach right now because every little thing I'm like, oh my God, is his cord wrapped? Is that why his heart rate is crazy? Is he in distress? Is it something I've done? You never know. And I was joking with Adam like, welcome to the rest of our lives. <laughs> Being nervous about this kid makes you realize just how much a mommy and a baby bond and daddy because he was a wreck yesterday too. He's nervous today too. Like he <laughs> We keep towels in Adam's trunk for when we work out and the leather seats, you know, we'll sit on them after we work out and we wash them. So we had them on the back of the couch this morning by the front door so we can take them and put them in the trunk. And I said to him, do you want to put these in the trunk? And he was like, no, I'll get them later. So we leave and he pulls out and then he goes back and he like runs back into the house. He's like, oh, hold on. He runs back into the house and he comes out with the towels. That is 100% me when I'm nervous. I just do like random shit like that. And I'm like, my poor baby is just, both my babies, all three of us. Anyway, so I don't know how much footage I'll be able to get from high risk. The, I did fill out my paperwork. The funniest part of this paperwork said, <laughs> it's like, you know, your name, your age, your do referral doctor, and then like medical background, like, are you a smoker? Are you a drinker? This and that. And then it said, are you sexually active? Yes. And then it, this is all automatically filled out. I didn't do this. Uh, form of birth control and it said pregnant. I thought that was the funniest thing I've ever seen. I don't know why. I mean, I guess that is a form of birth control, but too little too late. I don't know. It was funny. So anyway, um, within that paperwork, I think it was like 14 different documents, a hundred and something things to fill out, which is fine. It took like 20 minutes, but it said that I am getting an ultrasound today. I hope they will let us video it, but at the very least I'll get pictures because I had to fill out a release if I want the pictures emailed or texted or both, which is awesome. Anyway, I will be back. I'm babbling out of nerves. I love you guys. I'm filming this in front of the sliding glass doors for my neighbors. Probably think I'm crazy, but what else is new? Okay, friends. So we're back from the doctor. Well, I'm back from the doctor. I'm sorry, I do not have a shirt on, I have a sports bra on. If pregnant bellies offend you, I apologize. I'm at the point where the skin on my belly, especially right around my belly button, is so far stretched that it actually hurts to have anything touch it. So when I'm home by myself, I usually just wear a sports bra and I try to let that skin air out because it hurts to have, like even this blanket, I'm trying to cover myself a little bit because some people think pregnant bellies were gross. So I'm trying to be respectful and cover it, but I'm also trying to not be in pain. They're a trimester. Anyway, it's been a couple of hours since we went to the doctor. I had a whole bunch of errands to run. Adam had to boogie out of there and get back to work because he had to do some trainings with a live training class today. I didn't realize honestly how nervous I was. I guess I kind of did because I woke up at three o'clock in the morning and I couldn't go back to sleep for probably an hour because I was just nervous thinking about what could be wrong with my baby and his heart. At one point, Adam felt me kind of stirring and he woke up and he's like, what's wrong? And I was like, I just want to make sure baby's okay. And he just rubbed my back and helped me fall back asleep. And then he got up around six. He got me up to text my boss to tell her I wasn't coming in today. And then I went back to sleep till about 8.30, which is good because you guys already know if you've been with me for a while, when I don't sleep, I am an emotional disaster. So we did not want that to happen. At least I did not want that to happen when God forbid something very emotional about my baby, we could find out, you know, on this EKG. We headed out to the doctor, showed you guys that. And then 
what's interesting is I whispered to Adam, I was like, isn't that crazy? They yell at you, like you cannot be a minute late or we're gonna charge you and cancel your appointment. And I was so nervous driving there because I'm like, I need this appointment. Otherwise they're booked three weeks out. I'm in my 35th week. So I might not even get there before baby is born and I'm gonna live for the next however many weeks I'm pregnant, you know, up, up to five weeks, not knowing if I'm gonna have a baby with a heart defect. God forbid, like I still weren't gonna wanna go down that road. So they leave us in there for half an hour. And I'm like, you can't be late, but they don't have to be on time. I'm like so jacked up, my time isn't as important, but whatever. I really liked the high care facility. And I also said to Adam, I was like, I wish we switched to high risk sooner because I, I like this place and I ate those words later. I'm glad we didn't, I'll tell you about that in a second. But we sat there for a while and then they took us back. They took my height and I always say my height and my weight. They never take my height. She did actually ask me for my height, but she took my weight and my blood pressure. Tell me how I gained three pounds since yesterday. I have no idea. Obviously it's not fat. It's probably what I ate for dinner or breakfast or the fact that I was trying to chug water on the way to the appointment because as I was filling out my consent forms, they said there was an ultrasound today. It was 2D, it was not 3D. Actually, the ultrasound equipment at my doctor's office that's not high risk is much higher tech. Doesn't matter. We got what we needed out of the appointment. The girl who took my blood pressure and my weight was like, you two are so adorable because Adam held my hand the whole time they were taking my blood pressure. And she's like, oh my God. She's like, usually dads come in here. They're not paying attention. They're on the phone. They could care less. You guys are the cutest. And I was like, she was so sweet. She took Adam back to the room. I gave him my purse. I ran into the bathroom literally the fourth time I was there. I was so nervous and it was coming out like that. I just didn't realize I was nervous until honestly the drive there. Of course, last night with it in my head, but I woke up this morning and I felt like I was okay. We just need to confirm everything's fine. But I guess in the back of my mind, you know, <laughs> welcome to the first day of the rest of my life worrying about this little baby and his health and that's a good thing. Unfortunately, they told me what this cost out of network and I have not reached my deductible yet. So this cost me a very large chunk of change, but I mean, I'd rather be paying for something like this and making sure the baby's heart's okay than like outfits for him, you know? Uh, the tech was adorable. She came in, she was very explanatory with everything. She could not find the baby's arrhythmia. She said everything was fine with the heart rate. Everything was getting blood flow, all the chambers of the heart. It was very cool how she showed us. Adam filmed the whole entire ultrasound. You can't really see much of anything. I don't want to bore you guys with the whole entire ultrasound because you saw more and more detail in the anatomy scan and then the growth scan that I posted over the past few weeks. You can't really see much here because baby is smushed in there now. He's big. By the way, I will tell you his weight at the end of this video and how much he's gained in two weeks. Mom is in trouble if he gains this much until he's born. And I don't eat any sugar. It's not like I'm eating a tremendous amount. Actually, I don't have too much of an appetite because he's smushing everything. But I think the difference is my activity level has slowed down tremendously compared to what it was. I'm still moving, I'm still working out, just not as much as I was before that obviously takes a toll when you're doing four hours of CrossFit every week versus one, maybe. That's fine. She showed us everything from head to toe the baby. He was like this today. He did not want to move his arm. He did not want to show us his face. We got as many pictures as we possibly could. There's one where you could see some of his little face. For some reason today, he looks like my dad again. Remember 4D, he looked like my dad. Last time at the growth scan, he was Adam's twin. This time, I'm calling him Ro, me, Ro Berto, because my dad's name's Alberto. It is my dad's features on Adam's, you know how Adam has that like really pretty jawline with like those sharp jowls, like, you know, like that masculine jawline. It looks like baby got that, but my features. Although there's a picture where he's got like this cute little nose, like Adam's nose, so he'll look like himself and we'll see what that is when he comes out. But I'm dying, I'm always dying to see his little face, which I will see in real life very soon. Can't wait. So then she said, did you hear the arrhythmia yesterday? And I said, I didn't know what I was listening for, but I did, the doctor said she heard it on the Doppler and also on the non, what was it? Non-stress test. But 
I didn't know what I was listening for. I did see the heart rate jumping up and down. So she said, okay, she said, do you drink coffee? And I was like, I drink the one cup that I'm allowed a day. She said, did your top doctor tell you to stop? And I said, no, she told me to continue doing everything I'm doing. And I could drink 12 ounces of coffee if I want to. That's all I drink in the morning. I know for a fact it's 12 ounces because I have a Keurig and I press the 12 ounce button, that's it. And then she said, do you use cocoa butter on your belly? I'm like, I do sometimes. And I was like, oh my gosh, can that give the baby caffeine? And she said, it can. So she's like, mm, the doctor's gonna come in and read all your scans. Everything looks decent to me. I can't find anything wrong with his heart. His heartbeat is fine. I don't hear any like dysrhythmia, arrhythmia, which is basically the same thing. But the doctor will come speak to you. She might tell you you have to give up coffee and cocoa butter. And I'm like, I would give up food and water and air at this point if it meant my baby's heart was okay. I didn't say that to her, but that's what I'm thinking. And we were just kind of hanging out in there for maybe 15 minutes until the doctor came. We got ourselves in a little bit of trouble because we both had our masks pulled down a little bit. It's really hard for me to breathe in a mask anyway because of my asthma, but especially pregnant. You hear me just trying to speak. I'm gasping for air, I'm out of breath. It's just a pregnancy thing until baby drops. That'll happen. It's, it is what it is. Like it doesn't bother me anymore. You get used to it. So the doctor finally comes in, she jumps back and she's like, can you please both put on your masks all the way? And we were like, of course, of course. Like I was already pulling it up when she came in and she was extremely smart and extremely knowledgeable, but I did not get a good vibe off of her. Adam said the same thing. It had nothing to do with the masks, by the way. She was one of those doctors that is so book smart, incredibly book smart. And I loved that she explained everything to us because I, you guys know I'm an anatomy and physiology nerd and I love this stuff, but she was so smart that she came across cold. I wouldn't want somebody like that delivering my baby because I get anxious and I feel like I'm doing something wrong or they're mad at me or something like that. I just, I didn't vibe with her. Adam didn't vibe with her. She kind of reminded me a little bit of Aunt Lydia from The Handmaid's Tale. Nice enough, but also like very cold. But anyway, I don't care. She did her job. She explained that baby's hearts in utero beat differently and are formed differently than adults or like anybody, even baby moving on out of the womb. If I understood it right, I'll explain it right. I don't know, but basically the bad oxygen goes to the right chamber of the heart and the good oxygen goes to the left chamber of the heart and that's pumped through our blood, through our body. With a baby, because they're getting your oxygen, the good oxygen goes to the right chamber of the heart and then gets pumped through their body, but it doesn't go into their lungs. Like very, very, very little oxygen goes into a baby's lungs because they don't need their lungs in there to breathe yet. And I'm assuming that's why they're the last organ to form. So when babies are born premature, it's lung issues that usually are the problem that keep them in the NICU. But that's me making an assumption. She said they do get a little bit of air. She explained all of this for some reason to say that baby's lungs and heart looked fine. If there were any kind of issues, they would have picked it up on the way that the blood was flowing in and out of each vessel. He has all of his chambers, everything's getting blood flow the right way. She said, but also there would be fluid around his heart. There is none of that. Everything looked perfect with our baby. She said, you do not have to give up coffee. You don't have to give up cocoa butter unless you want to. That's a personal choice at this point. If any of the caffeine, the little, little amount of caffeine that I'm having right now could potentially be affecting his heartbeat. She said that'll even itself out immediately after birth. She said, even if you continue to drink coffee while you're breastfeeding, it gets so diluted in there, the caffeine's not gonna bother baby. In that minimal amount, you're fine. And and then she even like brushed over the cocoa butter and was like, man, I don't really use that much cocoa butter anymore. I've been using more coconut oil on my belly. And then every once in a while I'll do, well, I, no, that's a lie. I do a lot of um, Palmer's stretch mark cream, which I'm sure has cocoa butter in there. So I take that back, but I even said it to one of my friends and she was like, yeah, of course, because your skin is your largest organ. And I didn't even think about that. The text like, you, I hear you calling it a boy, you know the gender. And I was like, yeah, she's like, still a boy. And then when she sent us the pictures, I died, you guys, I laughed so hard. The picture of him being a boy said pee, -pee on it. In every other scan I've gotten, it says 
I'm a boy and it points to his little boy part. This said pee pee, I die. It made my whole entire day. I sent that to like everybody I know and everybody was laughing so hard. Baby is fine, thank God. We had the scare of a lifetime. He's good, I'm good. I go back to see my OBGYN next week. I'm grateful I did not switch to this doctor because I just didn't vibe well with her. I just didn't think she had like a cold demeanor to her, not purposely, just because she's so smart and so book smart that it just, the bedside manner wasn't quite there. And that's okay. I, every doctor in the practice that I go to does have good bedside manner and I'm comfortable with them. All different personalities, but good bedside manner nonetheless. I go back to this high risk doctor one more time unless my OBGYN wants me to go back. And I'm going to ask my OBGYN not to let me go back because I don't vibe with them, but also because they have the same equipment at both places. She just wanted to know if they were gonna continue to monitor me on the not stress test, non-stress test, whatever it's called, where they monitor my contractions and the baby's heart rate for an extended amount of time, extended for like 20 minutes to make sure that everything's okay. She wants to make sure they're gonna do that weekly. So she wants me to come to her office high risk, do that one more time next week after my appointment with my OB. So my OB appointment is on Tuesday cause I'm at weekly appointments now. And then my high risk appointment is on Thursday and hopefully I don't have to go to high risk anymore after that. She said my doctor might want me to go there just to be monitored more closely weekly. But again, if they have the same equipment and I feel more comfortable with my OB, I'm gonna ask my OB if it's fine if I just stay there because why go someplace you don't feel very comfortable? Adam's not allowed to come back with me next time. And that's that. So I was so grateful he was there with me today because I was just so nervous. And I knew if he wasn't there that he would be so nervous. So we're good. I've been hanging out, just did the laundry, watered the plants, you know, all the usual wall stuff. Edited a video and now we're going to relax until Adam comes home. He's working late tonight. Whew. It was a nerve. Oh, so I packed the hospital bag just in case I didn't need it but I was planning to film packing the hospital bag with you guys. That's okay, as long as there's time between now and when baby is born and I need the bag, we will do a what's in my hospital bag and I'll just show you what's in there for now. But what's really cool is I lent that bag to one of my girlfriends and I also lent her the Costco card that I had that was extra on my account, which was in my mom's name. And we actually since then changed it because I told them what happened with my mom and Adam, I put Adam on the account instead. And I told her, I'm like, you could keep the card or throw it away. It's not valid anymore. And I didn't realize that she had put it in that bag. So this morning when I'm all nervous, I opened up the side zipper to put something else in that hospital bag and out fell the card with my mom's name. So I was like, oh, she's telling me she's here and she's watching over me and baby, which was good. Okay, I have definitely rambled long enough. I love you guys so much. Thank you for all of your support and love throughout all of this. This was probably this past two days was the hardest part of this just because of the emotions and the stress. And it's just, again, I, I keep saying this, but it's incredible how much you love this little person that you've never even met before in your whole entire life and what you're willing to do or give up for them when you feel like they could be in danger. Part of being a parent, right? I love you guys and I'll see you in the next one.